Hello everyone, welcome back. So this is going to be a tutorial. We're going, actually gonna be using two different apps today. We're gonna to be using Photoshop and then also combining it with some features here on Canva. So um, this is kind of the finished product, what we're gonna be recreating today. And you can kind of take the tips and tricks that we talk about in this video and apply it for your own purposes for future flyers that you do for Instagram. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you're going to do, let's actually start from the beginning. <clears throat> Just go to file new and um, you're going to create a kind of start a new customized document. And so you're going to change the pixels. You're going to change this to be pixels. And since we're <clears throat> creating this promotional image for Instagram, we want it to be 1080 by 1080. So you're just going to type in 1080 here, 1080. Yeah, make sure pixels are highlighted and then create. And so you have your um, kind of iconic square template for Instagram. And so um, the first thing that uh, we can do, we can kind of change the color here. So it might go to here, background color. And instead of just uh, this color white with the F, 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 uh, we can try something that has a little bit of tonality to it. Let's see, maybe have a little gray in there. Uh, and image, edit, fill, background color. Okay. All right. So there. I kind of like creating the images, not always with um, just kind of the default light. Sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of color to it. So here is our kind of canvas that we're going to be working with. <clears throat> going to be playing with some new features today. Um, so we're going to use this kind of shape tool. And so you can use this to create different shapes. We're going to be using the rectangle tool, but if you use the ellipse tool, that is a way to create um, uh, circles and then triangles. So you can really have some fun with this. But for our purposes today, we're just going to go ahead and make a big square. All right, and so uh, oh, didn't want to do that. So here, once you have your square, you can just do um, either Control T or Command T, and that is the free transform, and that'll allow you to freely transform this image and get it however you want it to be. You can kind of angle it, stretch it out, place it how you want it. I'm kind of going for this effect corner. I think that's about how I want it. I kind of just want a little color um, uh, off to the side, kind of angle, gives it a nice artistic look. And then I'm just going to go to select or actually hit enter. And all right. So sometimes I just go and I tap the move tool just to kind of deselect things. But um, so we have this base with this color and you can go in here and um, up to the right or you can even the appearance here um, for your shape and just change the fill color. So we could go um, through different colors. In all of your color swatches, I encourage you to explore all of those and find one that would work for you. Um, I'm actually gonna undo, let's see. Oh, can I go back? Let's see, there's my pink. All right, so we have our pink um, there and we have our colors. It was just a way to show you how to, Get a different color if that's what you wanted to do. So next, 
we are going to open up our photo so we can get our um, this young lady. Um, this picture is from Unsplash and the author's name is Mike Vaughn. Um, and I can't quite pronounce the last name, um, but if you wanna find him on Unsplash, this is his photo. Um, and so this is the photo that I wanna use. I wanna take this young lady out, leave the background and just kind of extract her and put her in this Instagram um, promo flyer that I'm working on. So one of the ways you can do this is go into select and then go to subject. So this is telling Photoshop that I want you to identify the subject of this photo, which is the person and select them. So when I press that, pretty soon we'll see the moving ants <laughs> and it gives you your selection and I'm just gonna copy and oops, almost deleted that, did not wanna do that and paste that in here. So there's our selection and you can tell she's all by herself. Um, and so again, we want this picture to fit within the space nicely like we saw in the origin or in the final so you're just going to either command t or control t to free transform um, and adjust that image grab one of those corners and get it to the size that you want it uh, and i think i'm up there her a little bit bigger and I'm going <clears> to <throat> use the hover around. You can hover around the corners and um, when you see kind of the arrows have a bend to them, that means you can rotate this from side to side um, kind of on a, a um, an, an axis there and just kind of change it or turn it however you want to. So free transform is a really neat way of just what, what it says, freely transforming the photo, um, adjusting any of the uh, height width proportional constraints. So another way to get to that um, is go to edit and then free transform. And then you, you'll see she kind of, those corners appear again and you can adjust it however you see fit. And so you can, angle her however you want for your purposes. For mine, I think I'm going to just have her kind of angled here, there about. Yeah. All right. Um, so hit enter and she's placed. So you can see we have our kind of our base layer, our background with our color. Then we added a shape to give it a little bit of dimension and a color pop. And now we are ready to fold in and add some text. So over here, you can click the text tool uh, or the type tool, it has a T and just grab that. And here we go. So it looks like this might already, okay, so this is really tiny. So we want to increase the font size maybe to let's see. Uh, let's actually type in, let's see. YouTube 5, 25, 55. So it's getting a little bigger and we could even um, command T here and just kind of stretch out what we're doing. Um, let's see. Hmm. Uh, let's see. All right, so I think I kind of like that. You can go in here and just kind of play with the different fonts that you find. I'm going to just kind of stack the text. Uh, channel and kind of 
move and stack it how I, I want it. And I'm using railway font here. Um, you can use whatever one suits your purposes, the tone, look and feel that you're going for. Okay, so I am going to uh, just make sure this is left justified. Both of those are. And uh, let's see, we can create another tool. Just say, let's see. Let me see, what do we say in the other one? Set me YouTube channel launching. Okay. So let's see, launch. And when you're dealing with text it, with Photoshop, they usually have these presets kind of already in there. You can just delete all of those out and it's just kind of a placeholder. Launching. Boom. So with Railway, we can play around with just the size of, of the different fonts. We can actually, um, play around with Roboto, because I think that gives you the thin option that I tried in the original when I just peeked at that. So that is Roboto, um, and that is Roboto thin. So I just changed the weight there, and you can even try light if you want to. It gives it a little bit more weight, um, but it's just nice to have kind of a um, kind of play with the text hierarchy a little bit in there. And then I'm going to put date up here, May 2021, and get my move tool and kind of move that around. So it won't be exactly like the one that I did before, but it'll be kind of close and you'll get a sense how to do it. So now I want to kind of highlight this and add some color to the date and also the launching part so that it sticks out a little bit more. So with that highlighted, I'm going to go over here to color. I'm going to hit swatches and the pink that I'm using already in the document is already up front. So I'm just going to, when I see that color picker change, going to go ahead and click it and it automatically highlighted it for me. So I'm gonna go down to launching. Again, highlight my text, wait till I see the color picker, click it with the mouse, and then we're good to go. And so you can see now um, that this is kind of coming together. So you can play again, Text and fonts are very personal choices, so you can play around with it and find what works for you and what works for what it is that you're creating. I'm not going to spend too much time going through the different fonts. Um, you can definitely look through all of those. Uh, Photoshop has a wide selection of those and figure out which one works for you. I'm gonna create another text box here and just type in, uh, let's see, what did I have on the original? Join our email list, okay? Go here, just join, let's see. Let's use that font size just so we can see it a little bit. So join our, uh, all caps maybe, join our email list. And Railway, it's bolded. Um, we could try the Roboto here again, <clears throat> just so we can have maybe not thin, but maybe light for that one. Um, so we can have that there. Join our email list. We can play with the size of that. If we wanted to make it bigger, we could uh, just kind of play around with the space in the image. So that's a little too big, not 40, maybe 30. Maybe a good, let's try 30. 
and I almost want this more bolded. So let's let's try. How does that look? Let's let's try that. Um, <clears throat> so we've got YouTube channel launching. Join our mailing list. And then um, you could actually go down here, create another text box, and then just kind of put at, I'm gonna just put at my channel. I'm gonna use the railway for this one. At my channel. My YouTube channel. And this one, I also want to use the pink. I think I also want to go to edit, free transform. See if I can get my move tool and just kind of set it alongside there. Go back to my type tool, highlight it, and then let's see, 35. Get a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Uh, boop. All right. So this is coming together. Um, we have our subject in there. We have our, we're just assuming that these colors are a part of her personal brand um, color palette. So we have her hex codes and we put her color in there with some different shapes. You could even um, play around with different shapes, get some fun little triangles in there um, and just kind of have fun with playing with different shapes and, and you know, um, playing around with different angles with certain shapes. Um, so once we have this in here, actually, Okay, I want to, this is Roboto Black. Okay, so I actually want to flip the weights of the fonts here. I think I want that thin. And then I want this, this to pop more. So we're actually gonna make it Roboto Black. And say 40. Uh, place that. Uh, free transform just to get it angled better here. And then move tool to get it closer to that line. There we go. <clears throat> and I mean, you could really be in here playing with the size of the font forever. Um, so um, I'm, I, I'm not going to continue to fuss about the, the, the font size, but you can um, as you're working on your individual projects. So now that we have this, I've left some space in here because I now want to kind of take this image and put it into Canva to add some quick animations and just some fun, um, uh, just some fun visual effects to my image that I've created. And I want to do that in Canva. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to screenshot this and pull it into Canva. But of course, you would want to export um, and pull it in, but for the sake of time in this video, I am going to do it this way. Pause my sharing really quick. Resume my sharing. So go in here to upload. Load. It was just a screenshot tonight. Put that in there. <clears throat> All 
right, so this is our screenshot. And again, you would export your photo as a PNG and then kind of just upload it in here. So we have our, um, we have our photo in here, and now we're just going to look up some fun subscribe buttons. Um, subscribe, so you can look up subscribe buttons, or you can also type in subscribe animations. And this one is kind of close to the pink that she's using, so go ahead and put that in there. Put it next to the join email list, which is why I didn't want it to stand out as much because in my mind visually, I knew this button was coming. So I have that there. Then um, for the, my YouTube channel, what you can do here is grab some of the social media icons. So Instagram icon, grab that and and put that next to um, kind of however you want to lay it next to the channel, assuming that your name is the same across all of your platforms. You can um, orient that like similar to Photoshop. When you kind of hover around the corner, you can turn it. And another cool thing is if you go into the color, it, it picks up on the colors that are already in the, um, the photo. So I can go in here and make that the pink that I've used already. Um, so you can just select that there. It picks up, it grabs the photo and it shares what colors are already um, kind of appearing that they're picking up on in the photo. So you can use that. I'd go back to elements. Maybe I want a Facebook icon and adjust the size, just grabbing the corner, take it there, turn it, turn, 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 turn. And the little circle with the arrows on it allows you to move your icons around. And then the, um, the, the arrows kind of uh, opposing refresh buttons allow you to turn it and then change it so that it's pink, matching pink already in the photo. And then let's keep going. Pinterest icon, you could just do social, social media icons. Uh, All right, again, those little arrows to move it around. It's kind of like the move tool within Canva. And you can make sure it's well there. E yeah. And so, this is just kind of a quick way of showing you how I created this. Um, you can also go in and add some animation sparkles if that is, say you're designing this for someone and that is kind of a part of their brand. Um, you can certainly add that, take these free ones and just put them in there, grab the corner. And because you didn't build this in Canva, you can't really, um, put it behind the image. So you're just gonna have to angle it and make sure that it's not covering up her face and that it is placed in a way that doesn't, here we go. Maybe we'll just make them smaller, kind of coming behind her like that. Yep, so that is a easy kind of, um, easy kind of way to pull together different elements and to use the features of both Photoshop and um, Canva. So from here, you would just download, go to download, um, you would pick the page. So this is saying page four, done. And then you can kind of download that as a video or GIF. 
and um, it will download with all of those moving animations, your subscribe button and the sparkles. So yeah, that is all to it. So I want you to work on maybe putting together an Instagram promo for, um, it can be uh, it could be your personal brand. It could be maybe you're starting a YouTube channel. Maybe you are starting a website. You can switch out YouTube channel launching and you can put website launching, new website coming soon. Um, you can play around with the different texts and make sure you use colors that are on brand from your personal branding palette. So yeah, this is just a quick way to create an Instagram image and a nice kind of flyer promotional design. All right, happy photoshopping and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.